Hey guys, probably going to be a quick one here just because I started feeling uh, quite bad yesterday when I was recording the Cup Series 1. And then we have the live show for the Truck Series tomorrow and the Xfinity Series Saturday. So it's kind of just today uh, that you can listen to this and then, you know, live shows tomorrow and stuff. So uh, focusing on the Truck Series first, I don't think I'm going to show much on the screen for probably the next 30 seconds and then we will uh, certainly look at them. Actually, yeah, let's just go on the screen now. So when we look at the Truck Series, okay... And we look at how, you know, we've opened up the field from 32 from what it was a couple years ago to 36 now. And we're getting to the point to where we're only getting 32 cars showing up to races, 31 cars. And we're seeing the situation to where we are looking at the uh, top of the salary being held. Let's, hold on, here, I'll just look here. Like when we look at the top of the salary um, for, uh, let's find a Cup Series one. Or truck series. When we look at the top of the salary here, you know, we have Kyle Bush at 15000 We have Lawless Allen at the bottom of the salary. And what I wanted to do was I'm pretty sure the first year uh, that NASCAR DFS was going on was 2020 or 2019. I'm pretty sure it was this one because Angela Ruck finishes sixth or seventh in this 500 or in the uh, in the opening race, which is, yeah, she finishes eighth here. So this is the race. And so when we, when we look at this season, of 32 cars, uh, and it was really the first one that we had uh, for NASCAR DFS that any data points are, like, useful. Like, for example, like, when we're looking at the, the truck series, you know, 2020 we had COVID, and then we went back to bigger fields. Like, you know, in 2020 we were, like, rocking 40 cars. You know, 2021 we are like, back to rocking. Like, these races are having, where are we at? 40, you know, 36, 33 cars, and then we continue to move forward, and... If this is if this will load, let's look at twenty one. See if we can get it to load again. You know we're back to 40, 38 cars and stuff. And so we really only had one true season with uh, data points that we can look at with thirty two cars. And the reason I'm bringing that up is, um, and one because you know this is like the early days of of truck DFS. And I don't think we can necessarily use a lot of these data points. Like even, even if we're looking at stuff from like Vegas, if we're looking at things from like, you know, I was going to say Vegas again from Homestead and stuff like that. I don't think that's necessarily truly viable because when we look at the truck series at Darlington specifically, the one thing that we have to look at, I mean, we're going to have, you know, Kyle Bush at 15,000, you know, and just on the outside looking in, you know, when, when, when you're looking at like building and stuff, if you look at Kyle Busch, you know, and we're just throwing in guys in the middle, you're very much having to go to Lawless Allen to fill out these lines and stuff. So just on the outside looking in or entering this weekend, I'm about to sneeze. I'm sorry. I was like, I'm expecting to sneeze for like 30 seconds now. Um, what I would try and do is if we're play, if you're going to play Kyle Busch, and this is just regardless of what the projections are, whatever the case may be, just builds wise, I would probably exclude the Kyle Busch and Lawless Allen combination. Not because Lawless Allen is bad, but because that combination, I feel that is going to, I feel that that's going to be played quite a lot, especially if we get. I mean, I just clicked on Anchorman in gray here, but traditionally we have at least one place differential guy who you know scrapes the wall in Q, has a bad run, starts the back, and offers like 12, 15 place differential. Uh, upside at Darlington, so you have to prioritize that guy. You have Kyle Busch, then you're having to go in the 5K range. Uh, I have been prioritizing trying to get to, you know, Timmy Hill, Mason Massey um, in these races. I think this is one where, specifically, if you're playing Kyle Busch, I think you want to avoid Lawless Allen, Spencer Boyd, or the other Mason here, just because of how line of construction is going to go. I mean, I think that's the first point if we want to uh, target Kyle Bush and stuff. Now, the reason why I haven't brought up any data points yet is because I'm waiting for this stuff to open up. Uh, I guess we're just going to have to go here. When we look at Darlington in the truck series, okay, I believe it's 147 laps. Uh, let me go look. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. And when we look at these races here, since we've come back, now, when we're looking at Kyle Bush, we're going to go back to 2020, even though this was, uh, pretty sure this was a COVID race. Uh, regardless, like this is going to be the lowest trucks we've had at a Darlington race. Okay. So this might change the, how these races line up, but, and I'm not looking specifically at the DNF rates here, but what I'm looking at is the amount of laps ran under yellow and the fact that every single one of these races, if I'm not mistaken, has gone to overtime. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, pretty sure distance was 147. Uh, the reason is, you know, when we're looking at Kyle Busch and, and looking at what he can score in this race, because we would assume that he would be the guy who's going to compete to win this race. I think it's very much in play that we can look at Heim, Heim we can look at Heim, Eckes, uh, Time and Jessica specifically at their salaries and stuff. But when we're looking at what Kyle Busch can score, and we've seen that he has, yes, I mean, this is 95, 83, but like an example of like the 60 here, like I don't think that's going to work. Um, I think you can very easily beat him with, you know, three to four guys scoring high 40s, low 50s. Anyway, uh, the reason I'm bringing that up is because we've been in, we've come to overtime in each one of these races. Uh, let me just make sure. So this one ended in regulation. Uh, basically an in regulation green white checkered uh, with half the race under yellow. I'm pretty sure the next one, let's see, first long run to end it. So I was incorrect about them bringing my checkers. This is another overtime finish. A lot of short runs. I think this is the big pile up. Oh, maybe it's not. 58 uh, overtime. Where the fuck is the, am I just, did I just skip over it? Oh, it was this one that we went over. I mean, yeah, the field died here, not not usable data in this race. But uh, the fact that we have Kyle Busch so expensive, we have so many, li we have such little players to look at, you know, that's why they had to bring up the bottom of the salary from, you know, forty five to 5000 here with, with Kyle Busch. Like, there's a lot of interesting ways to build here. And when you look at how, like, we played a lot of Caden last weekend, we've, at least in this group, you know, when, when I say that, like, me, ACS, Astukas, all the guys that kind of, talk trucks here like we've been playing you know dean thompson on and off um you know just trying to get to these guys who are going to perform like lane riggs at 72 makes a lot of sense like the fact that you know tanner gray is still like what is this like he needs to be higher like i'm just going to keep playing tanner gray no matter what the case happens you know ben rhodes at 82 in finger increment 85 like increment 85 are you kidding me you know and so like I, I like entering the truck series this weekend, um, playing less of Kyle Busch, regardless of what his speed is in practice, because he's, he's most likely going to have the best speed in practice. He's most likely going to qualify and pull. Um, I just don't want to be, you know, in the situation of playing Kyle Busch and then looking at the builds you have with Kyle Busch. Uh, I just feel like that's very problematic from just an entry uh, perspective, uh, looking at this contest, like, uh, like this makes it seem like, or I would assume, you know, you have Kyle Bush, probably, you know, one or two nine K guys. Like we're probably going like, we're certainly probably going to go gray in finger crafting or whatever. Uh, probably a nine K guy here. And then you're very much doing a bunch of one V ones and two V twos to whatever projections are looking, uh, good for whatever drivers. So you're eliminating, People that you wouldn't play. So, I mean, I think you run into a lot of duplication issues uh, just on the outside looking in for a Kyle Busch race with 32 cars at Darlington. Uh, and the fact that we're going to just 147, uh, 147 laps, the fact that we probably end with a green-white checkered. I'm not saying Kyle Busch wrecks here, but if we're looking at what happens in the green-white checkered, people gaining positions late in the race, people getting stupid, whatever the case may be, in, in, in that sense, I think it's worth not... Um, getting to as much um, Kyle Busch um, as we probably would normally do. And I I just think this would be the build that we, or I just think this is a race that makes sense to not build with uh, with Kyle Busch and the cheapest guys at the bottom range. I don't know. That's just me um, looking at this race, seeing how the pricing is, specifically in the mid-range, uh, between like top 10 car, top 10 car, fringe top 10 car, top 10 car, top 10 car, top 15 car. Like there's just a lot of guys down here. Like I would just play without Kyle Busch. And personally, if he works out he, or if he doesn't work out, then I lose. Okay, whatever. Trying to just like, I'm perfectly fine taking that. that that's probably my approach um, for the truck series in this, uh, for this weekend. When we look at the, the Xfinity series, uh, let's go ahead and go back. Uh, so when you're looking at the Xfinity series here, like I have very little interest in Byron. I like all I like Eric Amarola. Now it's interesting that Denny Hamlin decided to not take the Darlington race as this is his favorite, uh, Xfinity series race to do. And the fact that he is so good at Darlington in the Xfinity series for Joe Gibbs, 
I mean, we've seen very much that Eric Amarola, like anybody who has been in the Cup Series or anybody who has talent, like Dale Earnhardt Jr., the, the old, decrepit, old man, you know, uh, pops in and could basically probably win an Xfinity Series championship with how just better he is. When you look at Eric Amarola at 10-8 in this car, like, I I really, really like Eric Amarola here. I like John Hernimacek. I like Sheldon Creed. You know, Sheldon Creed is a individual who, yes, you know, the speed that RCR had certainly slowed him down on the intermediates, like, when we look at it. Although Jesse Love is, is clearly better than Sheldon Creed, but Creed all, has always done well here at Darlington. Him, He's in a JGR car, 10-5. Like, why would I not want to play him here? Um, also, the fact that Brandon Jones is $8,000, when we look at, like, just on the outside looking at him really fast, when we look at Darlington for the 650 series, uh, you'll get, you're going to see, like, this is the place where you play Jones. This is where you play Brandon Jones. And I don't care that he's ran 10 races. I don't give a shit about the amount he's ran. But when you look at what Jones is doing, let's go ahead and X out of all this stuff. When you look at Brandon Jones here at Darlington, you know, and people are probably going to, you know, look and see his, his 14th and 34th here. But, I mean, a lot of these races, he's been competing. And he's certainly been a top five driver until he's ran to issues, blown a tire, um, I mean, I don't have average running position here, but like a lot of these races, he he has been racing with the guys up top, especially like, you know, like look at these two specific races here. Like this is what makes me want to play Brandon Jones. Like who is he battling against here? Uh, who is big in this race? Uh, no big guys to note. So that is not helping my point here. I could have, okay, yeah, there's the Hamlin. I was like, I could have swore he beat, like, Hamlin in one of these races straight up. Ross Chastain ran him down straight up. I mean, I, look, him at $8,000, I, I, I think he very easily can hit 40 um, points. I don't know. That's uh, that's mainly where I'm at. So, like, I have no interest in Byron at $12,000. Uh, Allgaier, clearly the best car here, just with what we're at. Custer, you know, show us whatever he can do. Uh Hesitant to play. I'd I'd more I'd prefer playing Custer as a place differential play as if he offers like nine to eight place differential points. Um, Chandler Smith ten. Like what's up? What's with the, like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys in the ten k range. So pricing's pretty soft at the bottom. So like it literally doesn't even matter who we like down here just because they're they're technically all playable. Because uh, in this range, like if you project anybody for like twenty seven points. They're either right at the fringe of value or they're just blowing it out of the water down here. So, like, this is literally all just dependent on who either offers place differential and or who is just fast in practice. So, like, the bottom of the salary, like, doesn't even matter at this point in the week. Um, Matt Benedetto, 6-1. I tend to like it if, you know, we're running into a situation where, like, RSS, like, just is running into situations or run into problems. I don't think it's going to – I'm not really concerned about the same thing happening at, at Darlington as Dover, but that is uh, noteworthy. Josh Williams at six. Like, this guy's going to start last, you know, and he's – I would easily probably project him to, you know, be anywhere from, like, low 30s to high 40 points, you know, and he has been able to do that. Uh, if Josh Williams starts anywhere near the top 20, I'm not going to be interested at all. I don't know. Like, I don't mean to keep saying I don't know. But, um, like, the truck series, I, I very much have the way I want to approach it uh, line of construction-wise, not necessarily driver-wise. I mean, I know we want to chase Heim, Eckes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This one's really the same situation, and it's just going to determine, like, we can't move on until we have projections because there's seven guys in the in the 10K range. The fact that you're going to want to try and get to two, if not three of those, which you could very easily get to three, you know, the fact that that's 58 we're at 40 we're we have several guys in the four thousand dollars very easy to get to three guys here especially if one of them messes up a q run starts in the back of the field or if there's a lot of place differential from either nemechek mayor all guy or herbst even jesse levin and quaffle here like this is very much a slate where i want to uh like these are my thoughts entering i want to get the projections and 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 then probably build from there i'm not trying to just rush through this but i doubt many people are going to listen to this anyway um, I'll be in the live show or I will see you guys in the live shows um, tomorrow Friday 
and then um, Saturday probably that's a that's a noon. The Friday show I got to figure out when Bobby and Sheets are going to go live and see if I can work around them. Uh, Saturday will probably be 10 a.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Eastern time, and then Sunday 10 a.m. Eastern time again. So I will see you guys uh, during live shows. So I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.